How's it going? So we got kind of a weird one today. We're gonna do some science. Like second grade science. So I always make these videos on the weekends, so if I ever need some shielding gas, it's devastating because none of the gas getting spots in town are open on the weekend. But I'm thinking, I use 100% CO2 for my MIG welder and CO2 is real easy to generate. So I want to see if I can generate enough CO2 using vinegar and baking soda to use as a shielding gas. So the basic idea is when you mix an acid with a base, it generates CO2 gas. Now, how much acid, how much base, and how much CO2 gas? That sounds like a question for Nile Red. So what I need to make this work is a reaction chamber that can contain the gas once it's generated with a gauge on it to keep track of the pressure and a flow regulator coming out that I can feed into the welder. Easy peasy. So for our reaction chamber, we're gonna use a Harbor Freight ammo can. First thing we need to do is get this sticker off of here. Bop! Now, with the sticker removed, I can install a fitting to where I can put a pressure gauge on here. Ah, oh, toxicity! Now here's the plan. I fill the chamber with some vinegar. Then I have this little dish full of baking soda that I will place in there. Now I will very carefully install the lid. Now we just give it a shake and watch the gauge. Oh God. I'm getting out of here. So as you can see, the gauge reads very little, probably five PSI, but the whole thing has expanded. Maybe this is the wrong thing to use as a pressure vessel. Well, let's carry on. So I'm starting to think this ammo can isn't gonna work. As you can see, the lip got warped and that blew the seal so it couldn't hold pressure anymore. So, it's really starting to look like a pipe bomb. All right, so I've tapped a hole in the front for the pressure gauge and another hole on the side which has a pressure relief valve. So, I could be a little less scared of this one blowing up. Now, get this good and tight. Let's give it a whack. Leaking out the top. Pressure's building though. We at least got to around 35 PSI there. So, I think this is viable. Did a few more emergency turns with the pipe wrench and now it's holding pressure. Seems we're sitting pretty steady at around 30 PSI. You know, not tons of pressure, but enough for a test. So we've got ourselves a little reaction chamber. Now what we need to add is an outlet that will dry the CO2 and have a fitting that I can connect up to the welder. And then I'd like to come up with a more elegant solution of injecting the baking soda so I'm not doing the whole boat full of baking soda method. <laughs> In sequence here, we elbow out of the piece of ABS to a ball valve just to shut it off while the reaction takes place to a flow regulator to choke it down so we don't use it all in one burst. And then we have a desiccant mm. air dryer, I think. A desiccant air dryer? A decadent mm. air dryer? I don't know, we have an air dryer out to a flare fitting that I can hook up to the welding machine. Those go together just like so. So we got this all put together, now we just gotta attach it to the pipe bomb, uh, the reaction chamber, sorry. So this thing doesn't look sketchy at all. Now, I've got this little syringe that just so happens to fit one of these six millimeter quick connect hose thingy doodads perfectly. So, that's the plan. We're gonna tap another hole in here and we're gonna have this as our little injector. Alrighty, got my fitting installed. I've dissolved some baking soda in water. Give this thing a test. So I think we need a baseline test just using CO2 out of the bottle. So getting up close and personal with my welds on the internet, I don't think I'm brave enough for this. Uh oh, that doesn't count. All right, we'll let that one count. So there's our weld with the regular shielding gas. So I've got my chamber filled with vinegar, lids tightened up. We can fill our syringe up with this mixture. Here we go. Oh, I can hear it. The 
The syringe has expanded. <laughs> now the needle has not gone up very much. We may need to find a better way to inject this. But, let's see if we can use what we have. Gonna hook up my gas hose and give it a whirl. Let's do it. Did not smell as good. Definitely uglier. And as we get further down, there is quite a bit of porosity. But it looks like it was shielded just at the front of it, so maybe if we just had more gas, this would work. So we need more baking soda. So I call this the parachute method. Who says you don't learn anything in high school? So I've got a little paper towel filled with baking soda plugging that hole. And I'm hoping the pressure created from the syringe will drop that down into the vinegar. Let's try this again. Here we go. The parachute method. Oh yeah. Oh god, it's rising quick. Let's hope this doesn't explode. We're sitting at like 50 PSI. Let's give this thing a whack. Hey! All right. We had enough gas in there to do a full weld. And would you look at that? It's not so bad. I don't see any porosity on the top. Who knows what it looks like inside. But, I think it worked, man. Here's a side-by-side. -side. So, I'm gonna go ahead and call this myth plausible. Now, one last thing I wanna do, I wanna see if this is a viable method of getting CO2. See if it's actually cheaper than buying a bottle. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to measure the amount that we can get. And I'm thinking something along the lines of, uh, balloon <laughs> underwater all right i've gotten this thing reloaded using the parachute method once again this time i've put exactly a half a cup of vinegar and a quarter cup of baking soda which according to the internet that is the ratio that we want one to two on the output i've zip tied a balloon to it and over here we've got a bucket full of water so i'm gonna stick this balloon in here with a weight to hold it down. I've got my mark right at the water line. Let's do this thing. That balloon is coming well above the water line. Problem, abort! I've reset everything up. The water level is now higher, so hopefully the balloon won't rise above. Let's do it. I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a shake to make sure we get the full reaction. Oh, come on. I need more weight. More weight! I don't think that I really accounted for the upward force of a Luna. I think that's a safe measurement though. Well, we got our very approximate measurement. Nice. Now we just gotta do some math. Babe! So the stats are in. Now, as you can see on this sheet of math that I totally did all by myself, we got about 0 0.09 cubic feet of gas off of a half a cup of vinegar and a quarter cup of baking soda. Now it sort of works out to where there are 36 quarter cups in this $5 thing of baking soda and 32 half cups in this $5 thing of vinegar. So we're just gonna say they're the same for the sake of this. Out of 10 bucks worth of material, we can get 2.912 cubic feet of gas. To fill up my 60 cubic feet welding cylinder, it costs around $60. So this is a very expensive way to get CO2 gas. But we had fun, didn't we? Now then, I kinda like the way this thing looks and having a little bit of emergency gas doesn't bother me, so any excuse to use the laser cutter. Ta-da! It is leaning forward just a little bit, but that just adds to the danger factor. So now, if I ever run out of CO2, I just gotta hook up my hose, smash the plunger, and we're good for at least like a two inch weld. It's a nice semi-functional art fixture, I'd say. That's what I got for you this week. Thanks for sticking around. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to explore this further, thinking maybe make a machine to harvest and compress the gas, or maybe a different way of generating CO2. I don't know, sounds like fun. So, you made it this far, Leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.